Let me ask you this, because somebody wrote me this long email, and I think you're the perfect person to ask this. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, you mentioned love. From a genetic perspective, what what's what is it? What what do you make of love? Why why are we why do we humans fall in love? In your own life, why did you fall in love? You know, the email that was written to me was you always talk about mortality and fear of mortality, but you don't ask about love. So I don't know if there's some thoughts you could give about the role of love in your own life or the role of life, uh, the role of love in human life in general. I think love in many ways defines my life. It's basically, I like to say that I'm a human first and a professor second. Yeah. And uh, I think this passion for life, this passion for, you know, everything around us. I mean, the only way to describe that is love. It's basically, you know, embracing your, you know, emotional self, embracing the, you know, the, um, the, the non brainiac in you embracing the sort of intangible, the not very well defined. And even in my, in my own research, I'm, I'm just very passionate about everything I do. And, you know, there's a certain passion that comes through it. And what, I'm, I'm sorry, again, being Greek, the etymology of the word passion. What was passion? Passion is suffering. The etymology, I mean, when we talk about the passion of the Christ, it's the suffering. Yeah. And in, in the Greek version of that word, pathos, like pathology, pathos is deep suffering. It's the concept and someone who's sympathetic. Sympathetic means suffering together, mm -hmm. experiencing emotions together. So it's funny that you ask me about love and I respond with passion passion for life, passion for research, passion for my family, for my children, for, you know. So um, there's there's a certain passion that uh, defines me and everything else follows rather than the other way around. I'm not first thinking with my brain, what is the most impactful people we could write? And then going after that, I'm thinking with my heart, what am I passionate about? What which drives me, what's just like, you know, makes me tick. And that's a beautiful way to live, but I, I love it how the Greek part of you just kind of connects it to the suffering. So <laughs> if you could remove the suffering. No, 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 no. When I say suffering, I don't mean suffering as in being miserable. I mean suffering as in being emotionally invested in something. Remember, I mean, again, if you, if you look at this poem, what is it saying? It's saying birds who love are birds who cry, <laughs> right? <laughs> It, yeah. it's, it, that's the very definition of love. Yeah. Exposing your fragility. Yeah. If you're not afraid of suffering, you don't fall in love. As soon as you hold back, you protect, you shield your heart, no love can enter. So there's this uh, Simon and Garfunkel song. I am a rock. Mm -hmm. I am an island. And a rock feels no pain. And an island never cries. So again, there's some aspects of that into this poem. The, you know, the fact that, um, you know, but you told me, you know, there I told you, darling sweet, that forever love would keep is this intermediate thing. And then it, there's a recall, but you told me you were right. Birds who love or birds who cry. So it basically says that love is the fragility that you're willing to give to another person. It's opening up your uh, vulnerable spots. It's sort of accepting that there's no safety net. You're just giving yourself fully and you're ready to be hurt.